those concerns, challenges and hopes with GA4? Absolutely. The, um, the concern is you have this user base of about 40 million users um, of, of Universal Analytics who now have to reinvent themselves or re-educate themselves to learn a new product. So uh, that's been a big uh, challenge for Google, trying to convince people to use this new product. Of course, that gives everyone the opportunity to say, well, if we're going to learn a new product, why don't we learn a new product? In other words, not Google. So they've opened up a crack, which I didn't feel had to be opened, um, but they opened up their own crack to, to allow people to investigate, okay, let's look at a world outside of Google. What has changed in the past 15 years? The thing to realize about Google is it doesn't do consultancy. It doesn't do kind of specialist one-to-one -one sessions with its clients. Uh, it's very much a self-service product. And it's very much a one-size-fits-all product. You can pay for GA360, which um, essentially is more uh, processing power, more storage in power, but the tool itself is almost identical. When you think about the advanced analysis that companies need these days, they do need consultancy, they need help, they need education, they need to learn how to think in a certain way to get the most out of a product. Uh, particularly if you're a marketer and you're learning analytics, but even if you're an analyst, uh, from a, a BI background, you, you kind of need to kind of figure out the way of uh, the ecosystem you're adopting. Um, so those are things that Google can't do, and that's what the competitors can do. There's always been this uh, thing bubbling under the surface in the industry about what exactly does Google do with all of this data that they collect. Uh, but it really came to a fall in 2018 when GDPR um, became a reality. Um, and there was now a law and teeth if you like, behind uh, data protection and doing the right thing. Google being Google is obviously uh, a major spotlight. It collects a lot of data. Uh, Google Analytics is a big part of that data collection ecosystem. So GA4 is, is an attempt by Google to address some of those problems. Uh, you get a lot more control in terms of how you collect data and uh, how that data is used. But fundamentally, you're still sending data to the US. And fundamentally, you're still sending it to a giant ad tech company. And the challenge there for any large ad tech company is what we call a jigsaw effect. So the idea that you have anonymous data uh, collected by um, uh, Google Analytics and you would think, oh, it's anonymous, what's the problem? But if you stitch all of this anonymous data together, it doesn't take long, especially if you're someone like Google, to actually re-identify people. Because if you, for example, if you know my search history, it's something like 150 uh, different URLs that you can then pinpoint, aha, that's Brian Clifton, he lives in Sweden. Um, he's an English man who also speaks bad Swedish type thing. So you can, this jigsaw effect, you can build up a picture of who the person is, even though the data fundamentally at the data point level is anonymous. I think the, the concerns of privacy has been a snowball effect really in the last, 10 or so years. I mean, it started with Edward Snowden. His revelations, I think, they're around about 2013, about mass surveillance that was happening. GDPR, obviously, was a, a big, um, something that puts a marker in every uh, business person's mind as, okay, I have to take this seriously. But as you, as you know, most people kind of don't think about privacy on a day-to-day -day basis. It's kind of not their thing. But um, when uh, the data protection authorities around about 2020 onwards started introducing fines, started fining people for using Google Analytics in a bad way and not taking adequate protections to protect their visitors' data. That's when businesses uh, started to take note. The bad PR that comes with that, when people start saying, mm, I'm not sure I want to you know, go to a website that collects my data from a certain company in this way, um, that has a bigger effect because you know, the large organizations, they can spend yeah, decades, maybe even more, trying to build their reputation, building their, um, their trust with their customers. It's all about trust, isn't it, marketing? You have to trust um, that the company is not selling you a story and that actually have something unique to say. Um, if you break that trust, it's practically impossible to rebuild. It's like love, you know, once it's gone, it's gone for good. The other challenge for Google in particular, and others like Facebook and uh, Adobe, is they are ad tech companies. So yes, they build fantastic tools, but their purpose, their, the way that they make money and vast quantities of money is advertising. So the whole purpose of collecting data is to be able to target people for personalized ads. If you as a company are comfortable with giving your company data to those companies on those, 
on that basis, then that's okay, that's fine. But if you're not, where else are you gonna go? If you don't want to send your data to an ad tech company, that's gonna stitch it together, effectively making your visitors their product. And if you don't want to be in a, a position where this ad tech company is gonna not only monetize your own visitors, but also have the ability to re-identify them. If you don't wanna do that, where are you gonna go? And that's the opportunity for competitors.